Hey everybody and welcome to another video. My name is Elric and in this video we're going to be using FinHub to grab our data for the day. Right now I'm going to be processing it for a week uh, if not longer so I can catch up with the previous uh, video regarding uh, all the Yahoo data just so I can be up to date and have a job get it every day. So we'll be using SQL and Python and uh, let's get started. So this is uh this is my code, essentially. I have started using what I've been talking about the past few videos, where in my payload I'm sending the query, the file extension, some resolutions now for this particular procedure. You know, do we want daily, 15 minute candles, etc. The begin and the end for um, the amount of data that we want. Now, most of this is just grabbing the values from the payload that we're sending in, ensuring they exist because we need them all. And then um, creating the file path and converting the dates into Unix time because that is how um, FinHub requires the, the dates for the API. And I'll go ahead and open up these just in case you've never done it before. Um, pretty simple, a couple lines of code. To go to Unix time, you take your date and you basically find the seconds between the date that you're supplying and January 1st, 1970. That will give you a timestamp. And for the opposite, since FinHub sends the data in Unix time, um, we'll be adding seconds based on the value that's incoming to uh, January 1st, 1970, and returning that date. So once we get that, what I'm doing is I'm actually appending the date to the file because this will allow me to, um, you know, just better organization, separate these files out, zip them up or throw them away when I don't need them anymore, condense them down to months or whatever. But I think instead of overriding a file, there's no reason to go back and bog down their API and waste my free calls on data that I should already have. So the Python is actually pretty simple. Um, using requests, JSON, IO, and time, getting our secrets, getting our um, data frame for our query and converting it to a dictionary. So we're taking this data Um, sending it in under this name, converting it to a dictionary, and then iterating through it. Because we're on a free BI, a free API, uh, limit the calls for two seconds in between each call. Try to build the link that we're going to call. So the key name is the stock symbol in our dictionary, uh, adding the date resolution and the Unix um, to and from. Ooh, yeah, from to, it's just a little bit different, but yes, and attaching our API key. So when I get the data back, and I actually want to show this, it is different than Yahoo Finance. Um, this is actually how it looks. We have a close array, high array, low array, open array, um, a status, a time array, and a volume array. And I don't really like this format. I like to treat, you know, it as one record. So I converted it back to this. So I can process each record knowing that this is the time it happened and here are the values. Now, if you've never used Python before, um, the slash will help us break down this code. So it's just it, Python's interpreting the slash as one single continuous line because um, it is white space sensitive. But this zip format is really cool because I can essentially give it the multiple arrays and then rebuild it. So that is how I'm generating this piece because I'm 99% sure Python's going to be able to do this quicker than SQL can. And since we're already in here, let's do that anyways. So this piece right here just reformats that data. But I do store both. I do store the response that I was given in case it was a successful call, but an error. And I store the new format because that's the one that I'll be using. And of course, success. 
and I've upgraded to start using uh, RebR for the exception, so I actually get a real error message and can go figure out what the problem is. Um, and then we, unlike the Yahoo video, we are concatenating to this uh, dictionary the return data so we can save a day or save a week as a complete object because we're not getting that much data compared to you know 2500 symbols um, from 1990 till 2021 so after that's complete it's just writing the file so pretty easy pretty basic for getting all of this data um and yeah, that's that's all I kind of wanted to share in this video. In the next video, we'll be parsing out the Yahoo data and this data into our structure. Um, so yeah, if you enjoyed, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.